Now here we have problem section 13.7, problem number three, page number 975. And Stuart's going to lead us through it. And we have a function and a point and a gradient. And um, what was it, the problem asking for? Um, find the, I guess, plane tangent to the equation at that point, and then find the normal to it. Find the plane tangent to the surface at that point. Okay. Yes. I might be phrasing that wrong. Yeah, find the, find the tangent plane at that point. Okay. Yes. Now, the gradient vector is um, perpendicular at that point. Homework is uh, on the podium, just in the shelf there, please. OK, so the gradient vector is perpendicular at that point, And the gradient vector turns out to be um, 2, 2, 2, right? Yes. So the vector 2, 2, 2 is perpendicular. And um, the equation. So if this is the vector that's perpendicular at the point, then the equation, does it want, the, uh, any, does it want a line, a normal line, or it just wants the equation of the plane? It wants the tangent plane and then the normal and parametric. And what's the normal and parametric? Well, first let's look for the tangent plane. Um, So when's come as six zero eight? Uh, when you plug the point back into here, three and for x gives you six, zero and for y gives you zero. Yes. Um, okay. And then four and for z gives you eight. Huh. Um, I reduced it later and now I could have done it there. But uh, so then the n values outside, x minus the point on the inside cross and then I get 6 times x is 6, 6 times 3 is 18, 0 times anything, 8 times z is 8z, and 8 times 4 is 32. Solve it, reduce it. This is my answer. Mm -hmm. Looks this, good to me. This is the book's answer. And Did I, you check your copy to correctly? Yes, I will check again. And the point is three zero four. The point is three comma zero comma four. The equation is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals twenty five. Finding any derivative, the twenty five disappears. There's the, the equation is three z plus forty two equals minus nine, right? And the real equation is 3z plus 42 equals 25? Mine, oh, sorry, mine is 3x plus 4z equals 25. Right. And theirs is 3x plus 4z equals negative 9. In several of my problems, I've gotten like this, where I agree with their x and y values, but what it equals are totally different. Oh. Um. Okay, so write, let's see. So write this equation down for me, just humor me. 6z, 6z plus 0y um, plus 8z pl plus d equals 0. Which one of those be an x? Yeah, the first one's an x, I apologize. Okay, now if we put in our point 304 we're going to get 18 plus 32 d equals minus 50 just like you do right d equals yes. uh, d equals minus 50 okay, true yes okay so we get exactly the same equation you do so I'm humored humored by this uh, I Suspect it's possible the book is wrong. But um, I'm 
on several of them is where... Yeah, the book could be wrong on several of them. Okay. And then finding the uh, parametric equation of a line tangent to it, or vector tangent to it, this is what I think it is. And I got this by putting in the point plus the vector values of the plane times t. So the point plus the x, x value times t, the same thing for the point, plus the y value times t, and then the point. Uh, da, 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 da. Um. They want a line in the plane? No, they want a line that a line that's normal to the plane. Yeah, so no, you did that perfectly right. Um, the book three, 304 is uh, 304 is a no uh, 222 is a normal vector. Wait, 304 is the is the point. And um, 304 is also the tangent plane. Um, yes, it is, um, and it sure is. So this should also be valid, yeah, okay. This is what the book says it is. We agree on why. We both, the book, both, book, book and I think is zero. Okay, now, um, that's not, That's not significant because parametric equations can be scaled and they're still parametric equations. You just have a different value for t. Your t is four times his t, but it's still a parametric scale. So, no, there's a difference in sign, right? It better, better be a plus sign. Nope, that's, that's a negative. And so is yours? Mine's positive. That's the correct solution. Your technique is impeccable. So I have no idea where their answers came from. I will also check the answer sheets for um, confirmation. Okay. I spent a lot of time. Um, I would I would let them go agree to disagree sooner. Okay. Yeah. You should have more confidence in your work because it's quite solid. Well, one of them here and there, I understand. But when there's like 10 of them, it, it seems like it's me. All right. Well, if it's you, it's me too. And I'm not concerned about it, so <laughs> please don't. All right. You, know you want to do, grade some tests? Go for it. Bring them back graded. I don't know if I don't remember. Well, I remember simple interest. The rest of it would take me too long to understand. Uh, it's not useful stuff anyway. <laughs> Calculus is useful. That's good. It's more for us because God knows we wouldn't want to have to not have all this much fun. <laughs> right, Tom Sawyer? If you, uh, if you guys have a fence that needs whitewashing, I can help out. 
Uh, we just so happen to have something very similar here, and, but we won't do it ourselves, Zach. We don't like anybody else to it doesn't look uh, take any, our pleasure. It doesn't look anything like it, Fence. Well, we used to do fences, but we found out this was more fun, so we, we really got into this now. Sleep deprivation cam. Here, so I can focus.
complete understanding. No, no need to bring it up. I can flip it around. But it's, yeah. No need. Okay. Not too much difference here. We were. We're okay now. Don't we look okay? I don't know. I mean, for the eight week of a calculus three course, don't we look? No. <laughs> even though, even just to be talking. Okay, what we have come across in, back in section 13.7 is a very potential trap. Um, I realized it at that time, and it slipped my mind in the meantime, and Stuart led me back into it tonight. And I went right along willingly, but it's a big trap. It doesn't work, and we're going to find out why. Okay. So class has to start. So that was a very good thing to have spent um, the five minutes before class on. <laughs> the five minutes before class yeah. since uh, five o'clock yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Well, it's going to be worth your time uh, when you see. Um, See the distinction, time well spent to focus in on this. And you refuse to let it go unresolved, which was, was good. So you're going to find out a very uh, good point that we're going to resolve this. Okay, so let's start the class. Um, now, this will be our last class. And the idea of tonight's class is to solidify your problem sets, starting in 13.7 all the way through 15.1, uh, and uh, make sure that you have everything that you want and need. Particularly, we're going to focus on, I believe it's 14.8, which is uh, triple integrals in spherical and um, cylindrical coordinates, because we didn't put those on the whiteboard yet. And I'm going to do a little presentation uh, when the time arises. But uh, Stuart has pointed out a um, misstep in doing a problem way back in 13.7. And since it's arisen, then I'm going to um, illustrate the um, right and wrong of this situation, okay? If we are given a starting function called x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals zero, equals 25, right? Okay. Now, there are two ways that you can interpret this function. The way you don't want to interpret it, because this is in section 13.7, which is dealing to tangent planes to surfaces. We want tangent plane to a surface. Um, but So what we don't want to do is say that this is a function in XYZ space that has some um, result, say a temperature. Say the temperature at this point, x, y, and z, is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25, true? Temperature over here is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 25. So the temperature everywhere in the room is given as a function of x and y and z, agreed? So now at this point, the gradient is going to point in the direction of increasing temperature, agreed? So the gradient is going to point in the direction of increasing temperature. Now, we can also, so this is one interpretation, a point in three space. So the other interpretation is that z is some function of x and y. So z is a surface. So in this case, the normal to this surface points outward from 
um, all of the possible curves that you can draw inside of this surface. So this normal has no relation to this normal. This is a vector that's normal to a line of constant z, not normal to a line of constant temperature, which includes all three variables. This is a line that's normal to two variables. The gradient is normal to all three variables. So the gradient is not the tool that we want. The gradient points in a direction that's normal to the function including all three variables. What we want is a vector that's normal to the surface defined by the other two variables. So we want to work on page uh, at 973. So this is the equation that will describe the tangent plane at the point z, at the point x, y, x0, y0. And it comes about um, by dotting the gradient, we take the gradient, exactly the same. Okay. Nope. Comes out exactly the same. Z equals. Well, let's uh, put in these numbers and see if we produce any difference. So let's look at the equation 5 on 973. So, and this, now let's turn the board around and get our numbers. Okay. So, so the point at which we want is 304 still? Yes. So, point equals 304. So, if we do it by using the equation z equals f x0 y0 plus f of x x minus x0 plus f of y y minus y0. Now, f of y is a 2y and y minus y0 is y minus 0. Okay? And f of x is 2x, and it's x minus 3. And um, the function evaluated at uh, x0, y0 is uh, going to be um, uh, 9 plus 0. That's where it's 25 minus 9. Um, 25 is the difference. Um, because x is 3. So, the, yeah, the Oh, x is 3. Z equals f of x. So let's solve, we have to solve this equation for z. Um, so z equals square root of 25 minus x squared minus y squared. So this point evaluated 
at our point is square root of 16 or 4, right? Yes. yes. So this is equal to 4, z equals 4. So this is the equation for our plane. So the equation for the plane is that z Well, this has to be evaluated at the point. These are evaluated at the point also. So this is evaluated at the point. So this, this one should be like the easiest one. Three is going to be six. And this of that section, yeah. Eight. Okay. So this C is C equals four plus six uh, X minus 18 plus eight Y. Um, so z equals six x plus eight y. When you when you plug in zero for y, it should go to zero. Yeah, not h. Oh, never mind. Yeah, because because uh, you're evaluating the whole function. Uh -huh. You're evaluating the whole function there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't use the formula, but I got the answer. Might as well just pick a form. Only, only that section is missing. I still have to do anything else. Yeah, it, uh, that should be... It should be zero. Zero. Hmm. 6x minus 3. 6x, um, so... Let's do this again. 6x minus 18 plus 8y, true? Uh, zero y. Because when you... Plug in uh, zero for y, two times zero. Ah, zero for y. Okay. <laughs> that was that was AJ's fault. He caught it. Okay. So we don't have any y in the plane at all. Hmm? I have. I do. Well, I, I should think. I, I should want us to. So let's see. I don't know if it's right, but I have it. Y, y goes to zero is the way I've been doing it as well. It should only take like 30 seconds. Yeah, I can do this section. I can't this is number two, else. right? Yes. So apparently that. what we this get is, is z equals uh, 6x minus 14 <laughs> for our plane. z equals 6x minus 14 for our plane. Does that resemble any of your answers? We even do number two, do we? No. Okay, I like, but it's just, like, you could have picked any of the problems. Uh, number five, I get the different answers for it. I just get different answers across the board. Well, what's your answer for four? <laughs> My answer for number four is... Just like I can to my answer. I have uh, X... Uh, Negative six x plus nine y minus sixteen z equals negative five. Negative six x plus nine y minus sixteen z. And then for the normal line, I have x equals uh, negative three minus six t. Y equals one plus nine t, and z equals two minus sixteen z. Yeah, that's exactly like that. That's all wrong. Uh, I get the odd one wrong. Well, what about the easy one? Oh. <laughs> I see, I see what's different. I have 6x Okay, I see what's different now. Um, okay. Is that wrong? Um, I'm going to restart my solution. I see where my solution went south. Um, f of x is not what we think f of x is. Now, what I want to do is see why this um, solution the gradient doesn't yield the same answer. The function of x, y, z equals zero on the surface. So we have the gradient um, as normal. So the tangent line equals zero.
zero. Um, Now in this one, are you asked to find, yeah, you asked us to find the parametric equations as well. Well, and let's say we divided the whole equation by two. That's like okay. if you take yours and you divide it no, by two. No, mine has an error in it. I have to uh, restart mine. Down to the bottom, three x plus four z equals 25. Yeah. You can't. Um, that that is mine being rated. Um, they have they have mine there. I don't no, mind. That's what they have. They I don't have mind if they D scale differently as long as they can be scaled, because t is an arbitrary parameter. As long as it can be scaled. Um, thirteen seven, right? Yeah. Mm. Number three, thirteen seven. Your book is different than mine. Three x plus four z equals twenty five. Are you kidding me? No, that's what I get if you reduce it. There's no reason to reduce it, but that's what I get. Tangent plane, 3x plus 4z equals 25. 3x plus 4z, I don't know where that negative 9 is. 3x minus 4z equals negative 9. I get um, 25. No, look, our... I know, our answers are completely different. Well, same, different. same section, same number, tangent plane, but different answer. And different page. What did you do, print your own book? Apparently. So your, your answers are wrong? No, one of your answers are always wrong. Yeah, apparently. But I is thought... That, is that a uh, Xerox book? Is that a black market It might be, because he got... You well, know, I, you know what? You know what? It's not the same book. This is not international. It's combined nine. Mine's international. There you go. What's your ISBN? I don't know. Is, and mine's tenth. Yours is ninth mix. I thought Yours we were supposed, I thought we were supposed to get uh, the ninth one. I searched for the ISBN. We're in 10th edition, dude. Oh, well, that explains a lot. <laughs> so, well, I'm glad we found this out early on in the course so we don't have eight weeks of Yeah, misery. the last day. But <laughs> I thought that if you reduced it, because I can reduce it and get the 3x plus 4z, but I thought if you reduce the whole equation, oh, you had 50 at the end. I had 25 still. Okay. Why does it go to 50? I s I, uh, because, well, I can explain my answer on the board now that I'm apparently right. Yeah, it's right, but why does it go to 50? So, uh, here's your end values. Yeah. You plug there, there, and there. Yeah, I got those. And then the points are here. Mm -hmm. So, 8 times negative 4. Oh, you distribute three. out. Okay. Yeah, All right. That's what it comes to. All right. Okay, right. now the reason this approach didn't yield the same thing is because um, f of x. Uh, f of x is the derivative of f. It's not the derivative of this, which is capital F. So small f is um, what z is equal to. Z, is, this is capital F. So I took, what I did was I took uh, capital F of x, and uh, as we would for the gradient. But in this approach, you have to take the derivative of small f which is the square root. And then we would come down to the same answer because the two approaches are valid. So the two approaches give the same answers. So it's not a question of do or don't do. You can do either one you want. You just don't buy a ninth edition book. This is the second class that I've taken that I ordered a specific ISBN off of Amazon.com and they sent me the wrong version. Like, I, I don't search by name. I search no, by name. They're just being careless because they don't want to have to would have you also didn't pay, well, we paid for our books. That are obsolete. I paid so. 48. Yeah, I They're paid 100 bucks. Yeah. I always have a problem with shipping books. With They're those selling books. Older, I always buy stuff. Books. It's always the wrong one. Mm. I've had to send so many long books back. I just buy so many long because it's just... Okay, so what we've got here for you to do, take a look at, um, last class or thereabouts, two classes ago, uh, I distributed a part one graded um, points for your uh, test two, and, and promise you that part two would be forthcoming on the grading. So what I have graded for you now is the multiple choice uh, feed part of uh, part two.
So you can look at the multiple choice part of test two, and the maximum points were 69. So easy for yours to keep. Answer questions, 13 short answer questions, which are still the last segment of that test. I thought you, you gave us those. No, I graded the textbook part. What short oh, answer? The, like the last eight questions? The last eight questions or so. It went to. Oh. Said um, people um, seem to like these multiple choice questions a little bit better than they like the textbook questions. So once again, the um, jury is still out, depending on what you do on Friday, can change grades quite a bit. Um, given this holding in of these multiple choice scores with what you did previously, and knowing that Friday's test is totally predictable, it's in your control then uh, it gives you the opportunity to go shoot for the moon. So let's see what comes of, of it. So I do want to find out about the times. Generally, we start at 6.15 on Friday, and we go until 9 o'clock. I've already indicated I can stay until 10, uh, but people still might be fearsome and might want to come in prior to 6.15. How many people would be fearsome and want to come in prior to 6.15? I'll come in at 9 in the morning. <laughs> and I'll leave at 9 in the morning. I was planning on trying at 4. 4, okay. You, you got it. You said that. Oh, well, 4 is possible. I just want to be sure somebody's going to come show. That's all. I don't come here and sit. Oh, I can't do 9? Sure. You can do 9. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> just study in the hall. Okay, so uh, we'll start at 4. And we'll stop at sometime around 10. Uh, and also, I will be here from 2 to 4 the next day. I have to come in. These algebra students making me come in. So if you really want to be conservative, we can do it a page at a time, and you can um, postpone some of the pages until Saturday. How many feel that they might want to do that? Well, okay, I can do set up the page, test the page at a time. She's going to be here anyway, so it's cheating. <laughs> I know. She what? She's going to be here anyway, so it's cheating. Yeah, well, she's going to have to teach algebra. She's not going to be have a chance to do any calculus on Saturday. No, they're just testing on that Saturday, so um, there's no need for tutoring. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is um, remind you that if you have a rectangle that has a um, width, a length, and a height, that the volume of the rectangle is what? Okay. Does everyone agree that the volume of a rectangular solid is length times width times height? We all agree to that. It's the triple integral of dv. Well, we're getting there. You see, he knows what's coming. He knows exactly what's coming. Okay, so now if I have... You're doing your calculator. Now, if I have an x, y space, if I have an x, y space, then I've drawn lines here of constant what? X. They're constant yes, X, X. Agreed? Yes. Now, X is everywhere the same. So if I want to indicate a change, then I have an infinitesimal vector that goes in the direction of increasing variable and is perpendicular to the line of constant value. Agreed? That little infinitesimal we call the X. It points normal to a line of constant value of X. And it's infinitesimal in length. Similarly, I can have a little infinitesimal dy. Now, dy times dx gives you a dA, called an area. Now, if you go to 3 space, then you get a dy, you get a dz, and you get a dx. And these combine. 
signs would give you a parallelogram. So what is the volume of that parallelogram? Length times width times height gives you what? Yes. So when you start off with the integral of any function over some volume, the first thing you write down is dv, which is generic. dv is an infinitesimal volume in three space. It has no infinitesimal variables on it until you choose them. So dv is generic, and you get to choose what your infinitesimal infinitesimals are going to be, depending on what you feel is the easiest coordinate system to work the problem in. So now let's look at another rectangular solid. Suppose I have a rectangular solid that has these dimensions. Suppose this is dz, and this is dr, and this side is r d theta. But those are the three sides of my box then what is the volume of the box? Right, it's dz dr times rd theta, agree? Property of three sides. Now why is that rd theta? Because if you go back to the z-axis, and this is the angle theta that is in the xy plane, so this is the angle theta, so a little d theta is a change in that angle, so this is d theta. But d theta is only the change in the angle. And we know if you have a circle, and you have a little change in an angle d theta, and the circle has a radius r, then what arc length have you created? r d theta. R d theta. So that's why if we have a radius r and a little increase d theta, we have created a side of a rectangular box called r d theta. And the volume of the box is the product of the three sides, r d theta, dz, and dr. So in rectangular coordinates, our little dv, our little rectangular box, the product of the three sides is r d theta, dz, dr. Now uh, let's try some another box. Suppose. Suppose I tell you that this side is d rho. And suppose I tell you that this side, or this side up here, is um, um, rho d phi. And suppose I tell you that this side here is rho sine theta, rho sine phi d theta. Suppose I tell you that that's what those three sides are. Then can you tell me what's the volume of the box? Rho squared sine d, d theta d, 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 d rho. It was really real hard to pronounce that. <laughs> okay, now why are those the sides of the box? Because down here, we have a point of origin, a three axis. And we have some radial vector rho that goes up. So this is rho going from the origin. So isn't this simply the increase in rho? That's very clear. Now up here we have some angle phi. Now, we have some angle phi that comes down from the top, agreed? So this is d phi, is it not? Now, this distance here is a part of a circle. If we have a circle that has some radius rho and a angle d phi, then what is the arc length? Rho d phi. So therefore, this side is rho d phi because it is a change in the angle phi and it has a radial rho going back to its point of circularity. That's not a real story problem, right? Because I have Beg no idea how to read it. That's not a real story problem, right? Because I have no idea how to read it. Just listen. Okay. It's feeling. Just get the emotion. All right. Don't worry about facts. Okay. Now, this other side, it's actually down here, the same angle, theta. So it's a d theta. 
So this uh, third side is an increase in the theta angle. So it has a little angle d theta. So if we go to a circle and we have a little increase of d theta, then what is the arc length? The arc length depends on the radius, agree? So it depends on the radius of theta, but the radius of theta is a horizontal distance to the z-axis. It's not the angle distance to the origin, because theta is measured in horizontal planes. It's a horizontal angle. So it is the horizontal distance directly to the z-axis. Now, if this is the distance rho, and this is the angle phi, then this side is rho sine phi, because this is a right triangle. So the, uh, the horizontal distance to directly to the z-axis is rho sine phi. So if I have a radius of rho sine phi, and I have an incremental angle of d theta, then what is the arc length that's swept out? It's the radial component times the angular component. And this whole key is that um, d theta represents, uh, theta represents an incremental change in the horizontal plane between the projection of rho onto the horizontal plane and the x-axis. That's what theta is defined as. Theta is defined in spherical coordinates exactly the same way that is defined in cylindrical coordinates. In cylindrical coordinates, this was the distance r. You can still think of it as a distance r if you want. It's the direct distance from your point to the z-axis. And it's given as the third side of this triangle that has z, rho, and rho sine phi, where phi is the um, um, azimuthal angle. It's the directional angle between your radial vector rho and the z-axis is what z is. So z drops you down directly from the z-axis. So this is where the rectangle comes from. So if you have these sides, let's say the one against. So in spherical coordinates, this is going to be d rho. This side is going to be rho d phi because it drops down. And what's this horizontal side going to be? So when you have d v in these coordinates, you're going to get rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. So that's where it comes from because the volume of a rectangular solid is a product of the three sides. And we show by geometry and trig that these three sides, in terms of these variables, are rho d phi, uh, d rho, and rho sine phi d theta. So when we product them together, we get the infinitesimal volume dv. So that's really all you need to know to work all these problems. Yes, sir? So in x, y, z, it's just the, the three, uh, the x, dy, dz. And polar, it's r, d, r, d, theta. D, z, d, phi, d, theta. D, z. D, z, yes. OK, so that's cylindrical. And then this is rho squared sine phi, then the three. That's right. That's right. That's what they are. And you have to know these as well as you know your middle name, so that you can just write them down without thinking. Absolutely right. Now, I've also thought of, an, of a better way to aid you in the visualization, huh? the visualization of um, these shapes that you're trying to find the volume of. So if we go to 14.8. Does anyone have a page number? Uh, I will in a moment. No, it's not 14.8. I guess it's 14.7 or 6 or? 14.6? It starts at 10.48. 10.48. The 
problems? No, Well, let's go to 1056. Now let me look at problem number 19. 1057 number 19. Incredibly, if I write down what are the limits that I'm working with. This last one is y equals 0. It's the last one I'm doing to y equals 2. And so the expression that we're actually evaluating is z squared um, dz dx dy. And our instructions are to choose your poison, pick your poison. Do you want to change this to cylindrical or do you want to change this to spherical? Sure. You must change it to something. So we'll change it to cylindrical. But the thing not to do is to simply start translating limits. You can do this, but it can not yield gold also. So what you do want to do now, if at all possible, is to reconstruct the volume figure to make a drawing, at least mentally, if you can't do it artistically. So first thing I'm doing is I'm integrating z from a lower limit described by this function to an upper limit described by that function. So what in the world are these functions that we're talking about? Well, if you look at this function, I think you recognize that that's a sphere. Are we all in favor that that's a sphere? So the upper limit is going to be a sphere. And the lower limit is maybe a little bit more quizzical. So one trick that I stumbled upon just this afternoon as a way to help the visualization is to draw the profiles. We have x, y, and z. Instead of trying to do the things all at once, just do one cross section at a time. Let's see what this looks like in the z, y plane. That's the back plane. Let's see how the zy plane slices our volume. Let's take a cross section at that point. This point is identified by the signature x equals 0, is it not? So in other words, our equations are going to condense to a lower one of z equals square root of y squared, or just z equals y, true? Which is very familiar. That's just a straight line, z equals y, agree? That's the line, z equals y? I don't, why did you say x equals 0? Is that because your x limit is 0? No, because what I want to do is now make a, uh, make a graph of what this volume, it's a three-dimensional volume, would look like if I sliced it in these yz plane. So you plane. want it in the first quadrant? Um, and no, I don't have to. I can put it all the way down if you want. Just sort of looking ahead. So it goes all the way down. So this is my lower limit of integration as it looks in this plane. Now this plane is delineated by x equals 0. Isn't x equals 0 true? What's the value of x equals 0 in that plane? x in the yz plane. What's the value of x? 0. Right. So that's why I put 0 in my functions. Okay. So point. Would it be a square root of z equals y? Yeah, but um, square root of z equals y, um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's try the algebra slowly. 
put in a zero for x, and you get z equals the square root of y squared. Mm -hmm. And the square root of y squared okay. is y. I know it's late. Okay, good. Now let's try the upper limit. And the upper limit, if I put in zero for x, I get equals the square root of eight minus y squared. And that can be rewritten as z squared plus y squared equals eight. Now, do you recognize what that is describing? It's a circle, is it not? It's a circle? Mm -hmm. So it's a circle, so it looks like this. So this is what the function looks like in the x, y, z plane. And what I have to do is take this line as my lower limit, and this is my upper limit. So I'm going to integrate over that region there. At this point, that's all I know. Okay. Now, if I go into the xz plane, if I go into the xc plane and ask what that looks like, So this is the line, uh, z, this is known as z equals r. It's another way to write it, agree? Z equals r. Well, z equals r is just a cone where you go up z and over r and they're equal to each other and you have a revolution. So what we're looking at here is the equation of a cone, z equals r, agree? And the angle is 45 degrees. Is it always 45 degrees? If z equals r, it is. If z equals 3r, then it's not 45 degrees. Okay. Now, the other thing that we've noticed is that the top of the cone is like ice cream. It's a part of a sphere. Isn't that the equation of a sphere? And this is the sphere that has a um, row of what? The square root of 8, agree? Mm -hmm. So what we have is our volume. We now have a picture of our volume. It's an ice cream cone with ice cream on the top. Z equals R. Now that you have the picture, you can, from the picture, write down your um, limits in spherical coordinates, uh, in rectangular coordinates. Um, now, my Z limit is going to go from here to there. That's my limit on z. First I'm going to do the dz. First the function has to be there too, so I'll put in the function in a moment. But the dz is going to go from here where z equals r, agree? It's going to go from up here to where z equals the square root of 8 minus r squared. So 
So now, just working from the picture, I know that dz goes from r to the square root of 8 minus r squared. Now, if I want to integrate dr, what you have to do is you have to go to your footprint, your footprint in the xy space. So dr comes down to the footprint. So what's the footprint of this in the space down here? It's a circle, is it not? And the radius of this circle is? This point. Well, you don't know what that point is until you algebraically solve for the intersection of these two surfaces, agreed? Let's solve for the intersection of these two surfaces. Z equals R, and Z, Z equals R is going to intersect Z equals 8 minus R squared, square root. So where they're equal to each other is the Z value of our, or the R value of our termination point, where we stop. So you just do the algebra on that. Why do you have z equals up? Never mind. Because the bottom equation is x squared plus y squared, the square root of it is r. Good. I think it's just r. It's not r squared, right? So that, that's right. So that means you're You have an r squared. Where? Right above it. That won't work. I've tried that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it about step to pull from the xy limits? Like y? Yes. Okay. yes, it is. It's a balance step to do that. Okay. So now that we have the extent of the r limit, which is in the footprint, then you can directly do the r limits as 0 to 2. And it is full circle, so the theta limits is 0 to 2 pi. Now, those of you that directly converted your initial variables without benefit of the drawing, you get to the same place. I did. You get to the same place um, without any real, um, um, without any real knowing of what it is that you are integrating. But you just do a blind substitution and you get to the same place. Why did you go with cylindrical versus spherical? Because oh, because I have a Z. Sir. I have a z that I want to keep. I wanted to keep the z because that's a that's a step up because I don't have to change the z if I go to cylindrical. Okay. And I also recognize these r's. So because I recognize the r's and I didn't have to change the z, um, I, I opted for something. Okay, so now it's your guys' turn. So let's start by putting this section up there.
That's the important part. I'm going to go to Boston next week, so I have to learn. That's the important part. You gotta say pop. I'm not sure if these limits are correct or not. Do you already say pop? People in New York say pop, right? No, not if you don't want to get shot. What do you say? You don't say soda. You don't say anything to anyone. That's not true. <laughs> you just say drink. <laughs> When, when my wife and I went to New York, I thought I, they were all incredibly nice. Here. I thought so too. Like they they were just like, I really want to go somewhere else. I don't want to be here. Just get out of my way. But well, they you, look irritated with each other. But. but if you like stop and talk to them, they're all super helpful and friendly. And all right, AJ, just give me an easy one. So I can this section here. You, so you know what the hardest problems for me are? And I've said this every day. Do I know? No, sure? the quick checks. The quick checks are my slow checks. I, I, I got quick check one A and quick check two. There was no quick check for it. No. Like Do you have your homework? Can I make copies of it? I don't know if I'll help you this year. You can take it. I do like I'll make copies of it and then I saw your wife today. Where did you see her at? She was at the Muppet Cookie. I didn't know she was my wife. Yeah, that's how I wanted to ask. How'd you know it was his wife? <laughs> All right, so some of this is repeats. Mm -hmm. You can you can, just, you can seriously have it. Well, no, I, I, I started rewriting all my stuff, but... Uh, I know I failed this test miserably. So, how do you like the new mode of You know what? I like it. It looks nice. The only thing that I think they needed to invest in that I don't think they did is white noise. What? In, they, I don't know if you saw it in the corners, they have speakers. They have speakers to put music in to sound out the noise, but it's just making it louder. It's, they need white noise. Three, I don't understand. Do you, you, don't, you don't know what white noise is? I thought white noise was like elevator music. No, white noise no, is white just noise, a block sound. White noise is like a right. static that muffles noise. Have you ever seen the movie White Noise? Yeah, it's it's like a static and muffled noise, and so it's what you use in like big open warehouses and cubicle office big space so in order I've never to have muffle the noise. With the sound of other places. Well, because what Must they be what, no, what Mokotaki did, what they did was the double My doors that used to go into the stage area, mm. and they had the partitions. They put the partitions up, and then they put tables and stuff in there. Oh. So it looks really cool. I really like it. But That was all my wife's fault. What was? The planning of everything. Oh, that's not what I heard. I heard it was all Tracy design. Really? Yeah. Hmm. My kids were like, Mom, you know Tracy design. Like, You're friends with Tracy, too? Well, I'm not really friends with Tracy. We don't really. I we're think they would have been an amazing decorator. Across the street. They, 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 they work together. I know they do. I know. I know because Taffy got Tracy the job. That's why I know Kristen because mm -hmm. I went to uh, Taffy's going away party and you guys were there. I really? Don't know anyone yeah, there. Space. Yes, you were there. <laughs> it was, was outside the, at the lake. Was I in? Were we in Calc yet? Huh? Were we in this? Yeah, we were in our first cup class. I did not. I did not remember that you were there. Yeah. I'm sorry. If I was painfully rude to you, it's because I had no idea. What I don't. No, you were mad at me because I wouldn't give you my homework. Uh, was I really? Mm -hmm. I do not. I what must. I? It must have been a really hardcore grudge because <laughs> I just. I just gave you all my homework without caring. I know. It's okay. I take things personally. I don't think so. You guys know people in this space. I've been here for almost six years. I don't know anyone. I try not to know anybody. Yeah, that's when I was in the class with, um, what's your name in front of me? Uh, Cecilia. Yes, Cecilia. Cecilia. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have so many people's names, I can't remember everyone's. Yeah, and... I'm bad with names. Yeah, Cecilia was there. Yeah, Cecilia was there. And she had the book, and so... Hmm. That's a few more right. still to do. Did everyone know that except for me? No, I didn't know that. So. Well, you had the book. What book? That's why he changed our book. Everybody no, that was in Calculus 1 when my friend from um, uh, the Air Force Academy gave it to me. He told me about it. 
That's a cop one, though. I, I know that guy. Remind me of his name. Um, <laughs> Sean. Oh, <laughs> Kenneth? No, what was it? Ken? Kenneth? I'm Ken. No, I'm no, well, not you, Stuart. Um, I actually know a couple, several people from there. It was in the class. No, I know several. No, I know, no, like, my friends that are current. well, one of them dropped out, but that were currently at the Air Force Academy. Are you talking about the seriously smart guy that I was sitting back here? That had already was taken? He, was he in your class, too? Yeah, he was in our top four class. Ken's. Yeah. I think it was Ken. Wasn't it Ken? I felt like he, I felt like Ken was Ken. I feel like this is Ken over on the side <laughs> of the whiteboard. I want to say his name is Ken. I feel so bad for not remembering. But I never remember. Is this a why or a what? Yes. Okay, it's an X. Well, it's just an X. What the heck is that? I don't know how to do any of this. I don't even know what I wrote. <laughs> Until it clicks. <laughs> Why should calculus problems have different answers in an international solution than a domestic solution? Oh, it's because it's version 9 instead of 10. Yeah, it's the version of it. But is it, not is it because problem? of the measurement? I think it's because they realize that they screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you put that more tactfully? I mean, I think it's they realize that there's a better way to do calculus. There you go. Is it the is, is it the measure is it the measurements? Is that why they're different? No, they like everything was the same. Like they just changed the number. Like so, you, it's the equation is the same except for it equals twenty five and not nine. I think you put your finger on it. F stands for. <laughs> Grade the last eight problems. Of Can we not? Grade the last eight problems. Yeah, just leave the grade as it is. Are you giving me some foreboding of what to expect when I start to look at them? Maybe. I'd say so. All right. Cool. I'd say you were giving me some foreboding. Oh, I thought it was. I thought you said okay. We didn't have to grade it. Like I got it. No, all now you my curiosity. I want to see what I, I would like to make a I would like to make a